Hi, I'm Tim, and this is part two of the course on building products with JavaScript. And before we get to the next lesson, I have several things to address. Number one, I want to thank all of you people from internet for an amazing feedback you've been giving to me. Each and every one of you, thank you so much. You are awesome. Okay, number two, uh, people asked to set up various platforms for interaction, and I have prepared a few things for you. So number one, we now have this Gitter chat here. Uh, you can either log into it using the GitHub account on the web, or if you prefer it uh, in an old school way, you can use IRC uh, hub to connect it uh, to it using the IRC. So whatever is your preferred method, just go for it. I will try to be here as often as possible, and I will try to answer all your questions that you might have about the course itself, JavaScript, or you know, general development questions. Feel free to ask them. Uh, number two, I've set up a Facebook page, uh, which will have the updates posted. I already posted the first video here, so feel free to like it if the Facebook is your preferred way of getting updates. I will try to keep up this you know, here on Facebook and on Twitter and everywhere, basically wherever you want to see it. Uh, and I've also set up a new subreddit, which right now is completely empty, uh, because people asked, people on Reddit was especially uh, willing to discuss things here. And I guess, you know, it works pretty well as a forum, kind of forum-esque uh, thing. So um, there is one thing I want to ask you about subreddit. Uh, I won't probably have time to moderate it properly. So if you're willing to moderate it, if you're willing to help me, please contact me, let me know. I will make you a moderator here and we'll just keep it clean and nice. There's no specific rules here. Just ask your questions, you know, give feedback, help if you can. And the main rule is basically don't be a dick, be kind. So this is all I'm asking here. All right, with um, that uh, out, there's the third point that I want to address. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I want to say that basically I've been reading and replying to each and every comment you leave here, and uh, I will continue doing so. So I encourage every one of you to ask questions because there's no such things as uh, stupid questions. You know, I also encourage people to who know how to answer those questions to help me out because I'm not the only one with the knowledge. You know, if you see someone asking questions and you know how to answer it, go for it. If you are not com uh, answering not completely or you have some mistakes in your answer or you see mistakes in my answers, feel free to correct it. I mean, I'm all in for that. I would love to learn along with you because there's many things that I don't know. All right. <clears throat> I also want to encourage you to give me feedback on my videos because basically this is the only way for me to make them better. So uh, there's that. And once again, thank you for your incredible support so far. Let's see how far can we go. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's get to the topic of today's video, setting up the project. Uh, so for this video, I will, <clears throat> I will be mostly using this uh, terminal here. And, you know, since we're doing JavaScript, I thought it'd be fun to use a, a JavaScript terminal. This is a hyper term, as you can see over here. It was recently released uh, by Guillermo Rausch, and uh, it is built purely using JavaScript, which is, I think, pretty amazing. And it's really easy to extend it. So it's a very fancy thing. Um, yeah, look into it. But OK, let's start with the project. So during this video, we'll create our project and uh, version it with Git. I will show you the basics of the Git, tell you why it's useful, um, and show you some cool advanced things as well. All right, so let's start with uh, what Git actually is. Git is a version control system, uh, and there are basically two large advantages that Git provide. One, if you use it correctly, it effectively becomes a time machine for your code. You can roll back code changes, quickly find bugs that were introduced, or test out new approaches without breaking existing code or messing with the code from your partners. And two, if you work in a team, it makes collaboration really, really easy. It's basically indispensable, so it's an amazing tool. Okay. So let's see how it works, uh, starting with the basics. I'm now in my projects folder, so let's go ahead and make a folder which we'll call building uh, products with JS. And we then will just enter it. So as you can see now, I'm in the uh, folder. By the way, if you're interested, this is Z shell, as I was mentioning. Uh, with all my ZShell config, but uh, once again, you know, if you are more interested in my configs, uh, ask me, I will give them to you. Let's focus on Git. All right, so we entered the folder. Right now, there is no Git repository, there's no versioning. So what we need to do is we need to initialize the repository using Git init. As you can see here, it says it initialized an empty repository, and uh, now in my shell, you can see that it says here Git master. This is one of the cool ZShell features when you can augment your um, command line, basically. 
Okay, so if we look at the status now with a git status command, you would see that there's nothing to commit and that is because the repository is actually empty. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a readme file. So I'm gonna touch a readme markdown and then I'm gonna open it with uh, sublime text. This is what I'm primarily used for editing. Let me drag it over here. And then I have uh, prepared some basic text here, which we're gonna copy and uh, insert here. There's basically no text that adds something that people who enter the repository actually know what is this repo about. Okay, done. So, um, and then as well, what we wanna do is we wanna create a folder called server because uh, we will need a project for a server. So we list now you can see there's a readme file and a server uh, folder and we go into it. And let's init um, package.json. So basically this is the Node.js project, right? So uh, let's call it experts uh, server. Let's say it's version 0.1.0 because that's where I usually like to start. It's an uh, experts rest uh, backend. Let's call it that way. Entry point will be in XDS. We'll leave the test command empty for now. Uh, the Git repository will be empty for now as well. We can add it later. Um, the keywords will be REST, JavaScript, uh, and experts. I mean, those are basically useless unless you publish it on NPM, which arguably also useless because the search there is not very good, but we'll enter them anyway, just to have them. And the license will be MIT because I like MIT. So it will ask us if that's really what we want. We'll say, yes, that's what we want. And now we go to the parent directory here. So we can see here, uh, now we have uh, in the server also package JSON, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so uh, we can check status again. And now you can see that there are two files that are um, untracked. As you can see them, they are marked blue. So I have a very nice Git color schema that helps me um, distinguishing this without reading actually the whole text just by the color coding, which is quite cool. Okay, and uh, so what we're gonna do, uh, the uh, idea with Git is generally to do a small fine grained commits that do exactly one thing. So committing all of those files is not very good. So we're gonna first add uh, readme, which um, command adds st uh, stages the things. Yeah, so staging, concepts of staging is very simple. The idea is that you can uh, prepare several things to be saved and then save them all at once. And this preparation is called staging. So we staged the readme and as you can see here, it is now um, changes to, uh, it is now addressed as changes to be committed. And this is exactly what we want. So, um, <clears throat> all right, let's see. Uh, yeah, this, in this way, it's basically gonna commit the whole file, but I will show you later how you can actually commit the specific lines or even, you know, small chunks of code. Uh, and uh, if I wanna see the actually changes that are going to be committed, uh, we can do git diff command minus minus staged and it will show us the changes that are gonna be saved in this specific commit that we're gonna do. So we see that our readme file is in there. All right, let's clear the terminal uh, because that's just not very helpful to have all of it. Um, the thing is that basically sometimes you might say, okay, um, I added this readme file, but well, I messed up. I want to undo that. That's pretty easy. You can just reset it. And uh, then if we do um, status again, by the way, git st is my alias for status. So I just don't like typing a lot. And you can see that it got reset. So we'll add it again. There we go. And now we can actually commit. So if I do git commit, it will bring up my uh, default configured editor. In this case, this is Wim. As you can see here, I have a nice commit message template, which helps me write useful messages. Uh, and I think there's a, one of the most important things you can do about git commits is to have this nice commit template that will actually help you write good commit messages. Okay, there will, um, so if applied, this commit will add a simple uh, readme file, right? So that's all we want, we're gonna save it. And now if we get, do git status, you can see that uh, it is now committed. We don't see it anymore because it's not changed. And now we have a server folder. Cool. So um, let's uh, add the server folder as well. And as you can see now it added the one specific file because there's nothing more to commit. 
So there's also a short version of uh, committing if you know what exactly you are doing and you don't need to write long description and you know reference issues or describe the bugs and stuff like this. You can just do a shorthand and do com git commit minus m and say, okay, add server um, package uh, JSON file, right? Server project, let's, let's, let's put it this way. That's a bit more descriptive. I am also struggling with writing a proper Git messages that sometimes can be hard. So, you know, if you, if you know a better way, do let me know because I sometimes do stupid commits with stupid messages like fix bugs, which is not help it, not helpful at all, but I try my best to do that. All right. Okay. So we did that. Uh, what we gonna do after that is go to the GitHub and uh, create a repository. I've actually already done that and the link to the uh, repository is in um, description to this video. So let me drag it here. This is the repository that we just created. So as you can see here, GitHub actually gives you a very nice way of uh, pushing, like basically it gives you tips on how to either initialize the repository from the scratch or push an existing code. This is what we want. So what we need to do is we need to add this remote here. I'm just going to copy, uh, no, wait, where's my Hebrew term? There we go. I'm just copy this line. Uh, what this do is add the remote. So the idea of the Git is that you can have several remotes, but you will always have like the main remote that you work against. Uh, so we're going to add this one as the origin. And once we're done with adding, we can say git push uh, minus u, which will set it by default. Uh, origin master. So that means that it will push uh, whatever we have at the branch master now to the origin, which we just created, which is the GitHub repository. So let's do this. As you can see here, it pushed some objects. And if we refresh this page right now, you will see that uh, we now have this nice readme, which links to the YouTube videos. And we have those two commits that I did. So the first one is actually the uh, readme file with nice changes. And then we have the package JSON right here as well, all addition, no addition, no changes, like nothing like this. All right, so I think we don't need the browser anymore for now. Let's close it, let's clear it as well. Okay, so this is um, the very basics of Git, yeah? The commands that basically you will be using like 90% of your time. Uh, commit, status, diff, uh, push, and maybe pull as well, but we'll come to it in a bit later. Okay, but now let's talk about one of the most powerful features of the Git, uh, the idea of branches. So I was I already used the board branches several times and we're now on the master branch. But the thing is that you can create uh, additional branches. So let's start by creating a branch test. There we go. So we create a new branch and we can get a list of branches we have by doing git branch command. As you can see here, where we have two branches, one is master and the star means that we're on it. And the other one is the test, which uh, we just created, right? So then we need to change to this branch, which we do by using git checkout test command. We're switching. As you can see here, now the Z shell changed and it now says that we're in a test branch, but you know, if we list, it's exactly the same. So we have exactly the same files. And uh, if we would uh, to look at them, they will be absolutely the same as before. So let's create a new file. Let's say uh, we want to echo test into test markdown and now list it. So you can see here, we now have this test mark on file. And if we do git status, uh, you will see that we have a new untracked file. Cool. So um, let's actually add it and commit it and do a stupid commit message test. Great. So uh, clean tree, you see, we're in a test branch, we have a test file. Now let's switch back to master branch and list files. So no test file here. That is, you know, this is the basically the idea of having a separate branch. You can enhance your code, you can improve it, or you can test out new approaches without actually touching your main code that should be stable. Uh, I mean, that's the idea of master branch usually. Okay. <coughs> um, sorry about that. All right. So um, what we can do is we can actually diff against test branch. So if I get if I do git diff and specify the other branch, we will see the difference. So as you can see here, the master branch does not have file test and the test file does not have this text test in it. So it's pretty easy to do. What we can also do is we can merge uh, branches one into another locally. So if we say git merge test, as you can see here, it added one file test MD with one change. 
So if we uh, cut test file here, you will see that it is exactly what we did last time, but we are now in the master branch. All right, um, we merged it. So now we don't need that branch anymore. So we can just say branch minus D, which is delete test. And if we list branches again, you will see that there's only master now, but we merged all the changes into master. So we haven't lost any progress basically. Um, that's a very cool way of, again, you know, developing new features that are kind of major, have major impact on your code base. You create a new br feature branch, you do something there, and then once you're done, ensure it's stable, you merge it back in the master and publish a new version. Uh, that works really well in Teams and works really well with continuous integration stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that was the test branch. Uh, now let's see how to, so there was, uh, that was actually a completely local branch. Yeah. So we didn't push it online. It was completely only on our machine, which also means that if you're collaborating, no one aside from you will see it, but you can also obviously, uh, push branches online. So let's create a develop branch and switch to it. And, um, what do we do? Well, I mean, uh, let's remove that test file because we don't need it. Uh, and uh, AU is basically add all changed files automatically. So if I can, if I do whoops, git status now again, you will see that the deleted file is added, but it won't add any new files. Basically, it's um, alias again. Uh, I will show you my git config a bit later. Okay, let's commit um, remove test file. That's what we want, right? And now to actually push it online, we have to say git. So if I just say git push, I will get an error uh, because there is no upstream set for this branch. There are two ways. Basically, if way number one, you just copy this, which will auto assign the upstream uh, or you can do it manually by saying, you know, let's push git origin develop, but it's actually better to do set upstream, which minus U is a shortcut for. So let's do this. And once we're done this, this will be actually pushed online as a different branch. Uh, this is basically the basics of branches, uh, local and remote ones. If you want to learn more about them and how to use them, I suggest reading a Git branching model. Uh, the link is in the description of the video, obviously. Uh, the article covers pretty well uh, what the branches are and you know how you how you use them to develop. Uh, in teams, how to use feature branches, how do you merge them later on and kind of all this branch, uh, branching idea, basically, yeah, let's put it this way. Okay. So now that we have two branches online, let's talk about pull requests. Let me quickly fire up our, uh, GitHub repo and drag it to this screen. There we go. So, uh, pull requests can be used for multiple things. Uh, first of all, you can use to, uh, them to contribute to projects that you don't own on GitHub or, you know, any other Git uh, powered website. So basically the idea is that you, you can fork a project, which will make the code yours. You can modify your version and then you can create a pull request that the maintainer of the original project will be able to review and accept to his uh, version. Those, you know, kind of contributing with uh, code to uh, in controlled manner, let's put it this way. Uh, and the other use for pull requests is that they can be used to review code from branches before merging them into master. So that's really useful in teams of developers uh, because you can have other people's look at your code before you actually merge it into master to make sure you know everything's fine. And of course you can also set up like uh, automated testing linking, but I'll go over that in a bit later. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our first pull request here. So as you can see here, uh, we can have a develop, which is um, one minute, which was updated one minute ago. And there's a button compare and create pull request. Now, I mean, you can also use this new pull request here, uh, but I think they basically do the same. It's just a sort of quality of life feature. And once we do that, you can uh, name it. So let's name it merge develop into master. Uh, you can leave some comments if you want to, but I don't think we actually need to. And uh, obviously you can see the changed files. So um, zero changed files, yeah, because we just removed the test file because that's the way it works. So you're gonna create a pull request right now. Uh, once we create it, there will be a special pull request thing in GitHub, which again, we can look at the commits. So, you know, because it's just addition and deletion of a file. So like zero changes, uh, not very useful pull request uh, from my side, but you know, you can have a discussion and if you would actually have the source code, you could 
uh, or file changes, you could actually commit on specific lines and discuss them. So it's a very nice tool for code reviews. Okay, uh, but you know, we made sure everything's fine. So let's, we, it also says us that it can be merged without conflicts, which means that, you know, it doesn't break anything, at least in terms of uh, merging code. So there's no conflicts and you don't have to resolve anything manually. So let's go ahead and hit this button and confirm this merge. There we go. Um, yeah, it says that to avoid bugs, you should be running your tests automatically. This is a really good comment. And normally when you have large projects that are working, uh, the workflow is based on uh, pull request. You have things like linting, testing, continuous integration, and all the other things that make sure that your code is good attached to each and every pull request. So whenever the new pull request comes, the test will be automatically executed, code will be linted, and you will get like a reply from bot that says, hey, look, your thing is okay, or hey, look, this is broken and you should check it out. But yeah, now we merged it into master. Uh, that, sorry, that's a wrong button. That's not what I wanted to push here. There we go. So and if we look at the commits, you can see now here we have this pull request. But uh, if we open the hyper term and I will open the log here, you can see that we still have this remove test file uh, as the, uh, we are on. A, let's switch to uh, check out master. And then if we uh, open the log, you would see that we're actually on a test commit now, yeah, which is like seven minutes ago, which is quite before what we have here. So how do we synchronize it? Well, that's really easy. We just do git pull. We automatically fetch all the changes from remote and then fast forward to whatever changes you have. So we have this log now and you can see here so that basically this was the develop branch and we merged it successfully over here uh, using the pull request number one from Yamalite develop. Works perfectly well. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, right? So basically uh, this is another feature that if you are collaborating or if you want to contribute to open source project, you will be using a lot. But those are basics of Git. Uh, obviously there's quite much more you can do with uh, Git itself, but uh, the things I just demonstrated is something that you're most likely gonna be using daily and something I am using daily or at almost daily, I'd say pull requests are more like weekly, but you know, details. All right, now let me show you a few more, a bit advanced things you can do. The first thing is called interactive staging. So the thing is that um, you can, add and commit bits of code, not complete files. So let's open up our readme file here. Um, let me drag my editor over here and let's edit it a bit. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna add the tagline. Um, let me, I have prepared some text here, so I'm just gonna copy paste it over here. So we're gonna say that this is a free open source course and we're gonna add a license to readme file because you know this is a nice thing to do so that people know right away what exactly is license of your product. So uh, let's do it this way in the second level. Okay, so now we have these uh, two changes and if we uh, see the status now you see that the readme is actually modified and we can have a look at the diff now. So you can see there are two additions. Number one is this free open source course tagline and number two is the license that we just added. So the thing is, as I already mentioned, uh, there are two changes that are not really related. I mean, this is kind of artificial, but you will get the idea. As I said, you know, in Git, it's a good idea to make small focused comments that do one thing. So we don't want to commit both of them at the same time. So what we want to do now is do the interactive add. I will show us this console, which was basically asks us, what do we want to do? In this case, we want to commit them separately. So I want to do patch. It asks us, okay, which file do you want to patch? Let's say one. And if we hit enter again, we will see the chunk. So this chunk is shown completely. These are all the changes. So I want to say, I want to split them into two smaller chunks and it will tell me, okay, this is the first chunk. Free open source course tagline, do you want to add it? Let's say, yes, I want to add this one. And no, we don't want to add the license. So obviously we can do diff now and see, okay, we actually staged two lines uh, from there and five lines are unstaged. Uh, we can review that, we don't care for now actually. Uh, so we can quit either by using the number seven or by con using control C from there. Okay, if we do git status now, you will see that the readme MD is now both changes to be committed and not staged for commit. That means that if we do diff, you'll see the license is not staged, but if we do diff uh, staged, uh, no, no, that is not 
That's what I want to do. There we go. You will see that we actually stage free open source course tagline for commit. So we can do now git commit minus m add tagline to readme. There we go. Cool. And now we can basically add the rest, which will uh, be the license and say git commit minus m add license to readme. So great. We did that. And this is basically the interactive commit. Uh, it allows you to easily commit like basically chunks from code. Uh, sometimes, you know, it happens when you work too much and you forgot that you've written too much and you actually want to commit the smaller things. So you can split it up this way, create small patches, commit them separately and have a nice Git history that's actually useful and easy to debug later on. Um, okay. So this is interactive commit. And uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is stashing. Uh, the idea of stashing is also pretty simple. So say we again do this test MD, for example. Yeah. So we now have this test file. And if we do git status, you will see that it's actually there. Um, we can add it to stage, but will not commit for now. Yeah. So it's added in stage. Imagine that we have to pull changes from the uh, remote. It will actually tell us that we cannot pull before we commit our stage changes or do something to them. Well, the good thing is that we can do git stash. And once we've done that, if I do git status again, you will see that it's clean. But if I do git stash list, you will see that there is actually one stash saved. I mean, you can name them as well, but uh, for the moment it doesn't matter. So what we can do is we can do git, sta no, git stash apply. And this will actually revert or un unstash all the changes that we have, which is pretty handy. So that we again have our, uh, let's cut it better, uh, test MD. You can see that it's exactly the file that we just created. Stash is pretty useful uh, when you, you know, you have done something that you don't want to lose, but you don't need it right now. You, know, you have to switch to a different branch or something, but you don't want to commit it yet because it might be broken. You can stash it, switch to another branch, work there, switch back, unstash, continue your work. Very helpful. Now, another cool thing. So basically, yeah, you can obviously, if you don't need that stash anymore, uh, why is this status thing? It's stash drop. So we can use drop to remove the old stashes that you don't need it. Um, and that's about covers the stashes. So the cool thing about stash is uh, once I already said that, you know, if you uh, want to pull changes from remote uh, and um, you have something in the works, it won't allow you to pull them, right? So what you want to do is you want to stash, pull and then unstash. Doing it manually is a bit of a pain. So what you can do is an alias, uh, which does this, it basically does git fetch and then does git rebase out of stash fetch head. And I have that saved as git up. So this is my alias. Again, if you're interested in my aliases, I will uh, publish my git config so you can look at them. But basically once I do git up, git will automatically fetch the latest code, then stash all my stuff, rebase to the latest version and unstash all my work so I can continue from the point where I were. Um, I just used a new term, which is a rebase. And uh, it is, um, I mean, I wouldn't say, it's kind of has the same purpose as merging, but it works in different way. If you're curious on the differences between merging and rebasing, there's a bunch of good articles on that. And I will add some links to the description of the video so you can go ahead and read those for yourself. All right, so I guess that concludes the advanced tips and tricks uh, that I can show you over this video, basically. There's a whole bunch more of really cool things that you can do with Git, like for example, Git bisect that allows you to quickly track buggy commits. Uh, but you know, I think there's something that you should discover on your own and if you're interested in that. The last thing I want to point you towards is a nice set of extra commands for Git called Git Extras. Uh, the link is as usual in the description of this video. I'm sure you'll find one or more of those commands, uh, like extra commands to be quite useful. Um, and yeah, as I said, I've shared my Git config file. Uh, it is as well in the description to this video. So you can see all my aliases, the coloring scheme I use and you know, all the other stuff I have in there. Um, I guess that's it for now. 
In the next video, I'll be creating the backend of our application. We'll initialize the Express.js project and we'll write our first functions and tests for them. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for your feedback. Once again, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to provide feedback. This is the only way I can make those videos better next time. So please do provide feedback, do ask questions, don't be afraid, communicate, use all the Gitter, chat, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Reddit, whatever you like. I will be there. I will try to answer every one of your questions. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.